Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but we can do better, you and I. I wish I could tell you what it's like to have a sea lion virtually smile at you, dip and dart and fly, dive under you, nibble on your hair, and tinker with your tank before shooting off to playfully chase a fish it's not trying to eat. Make you feel the connection one does when a dolphin comes within meters or swims with you, looking right in your eye, to feel that privilege. I wish I could express how utterly amazing it is to see the interaction between a mother whale and her calf, the love and concern and relationship they share, or what it's like when a calf approaches your group and, completely unafraid and curious, swims right up to you and bumps you before passing by. Probably, I would mention the time Emma, a 14-foot tiger shark who was pregnant at the time, leaned into me with her whole body and weight, that it was non-threatening, 
just hard to ground my feet and push back against her. I tell you, Emma is a regular at Tiger Beach and has never shown a diver aggression. The feeders feel affection for her. If only you could see all of this and more through my eyes. There is no doubt that for decades we have been patched fools. We have used and abused the planet, refused to manage resources wisely, ignored warning signs, believed Earth is so enormous, the sea so immense, natural systems so resilient, that we have inflicted monstrous damage. And now, amid all the information we're bombarded with, media of all kinds, threats of cataclysms, cynicism, apathy, guilt, and a sense of hopelessness, it's, som it's sometimes hard to see the coral for the reef, to identify and work on problems one by one. But as an individual, one can make a difference. Might we try to stop using plastic completely, buy glass instead, insist on reusable straws and more? Might you please try to recycle everything you can? Plant more, plant everywhere, become an Olympian planter, have a plant in your kitchen. Buy local as much as you can, there is no point in importing Fiji. If you don't urgently have to travel for work, you can choose a teleconference instead. You could sometimes take the train instead of a plane, as trains are comfortable too, and there is no turbulence on a train. We could consider using solar panels and even wind, consider switching to an electric car if you can. Perhaps you could resist further financing the pet trade, which is considered one of the greatest threats to wildlife today. If you do buy a pet, try to make sure it's captive bred or pick one up from the pound instead. And if being a carnivore isn't paramount to you, you could consider eating less meat. A long list of options I know, but we can, must all start somewhere. Wouldn't it be nice if we could all have a chance to see dolphins, turtles, sharks, and whales in the wild for years to come, to breathe clean air, to be able to keep growing our crops and, feeding, and feed ourselves, to drink clean water and not to waste it, to be measured and thoughtful, to reduce our impact, to roam plastic-free beaches and witness clean deserts and plains, to trust that we're breathing and eating less microplastics, to still have rainforests and reefs, the chance to follow the great migration in the Serengeti and the Sardine Run, to feel like we're doing our level best, I don't honestly know how much we will change over the coming decades or save, even if we try as hard as we can, but I believe it's worth doing every single thing, making every effort we possibly can to try. That we will feel and live better if we do, and that the generations behind us will be grateful for our successes as much as they will be disgusted by our failures. Thank you. Yali <laughs> Madat. خوش آمدید، مرسی، تشکر از شما برای پیوستن با ما برای قسمت دیگری از برنامه با استاب جمعه شب. نام من آلیا جاسمن سوانی است و خورسندم که امشب میزبان برنامه این هفته هستم. و تمام جماعت و اعضای خانواده های آنها از سایر عدیان و مذاهب را که از سر و سر جهان ما را تماشا می کنند در این برنامه سمیم قلب خوش آمدید می گویم. من امشب از خانم از لس آنجلس کالیفرنیا میزبان شما هستم. نه نه نگران نباشید تهیه کنندگان از میزبانان کانادایی خسته نمی شوند. گردانندگان زیاد کانادایی هستند که آنها شگفتانگیز هستند. من در واقع یکی از آنها هستم. من افتخار می کنم که یک کانادایی از اتاوا هستم. اگرچه من سالهای زیاد را در تورنتو گذراندم و خیلی دلم برای جماعت خانه تورنتو تنگ شده است. اگرچه در حال حاضر من در اینجا به کالیفرنیا نقل مکان کردم جایی که من زمستان از زمستان فرار نمودم اما قلبم همیشه متعلق به شمال یعنی کانادای برفی می باشد امیدوارم از برنامه با استاب جمعه شب گذشته لذت برده باشید که گفتگو با عالی جنابان هر یک والی صاحبان آلبرتا و بریتش کولمبیا واقعا منبع الهام بخشی برای همه ما بوده است که من حیث شهروندان ما شاهد دستاوردهایی که به عنوان یک جماعت به دست آورده ایم هستیم. 
البته هفته گذشته با جشن گرفتن هفته رضاکاران برای این برنامه بسیار مهم است که به عنوان یکی از ارکانهای ارکانهای اخلاق و ایمان ما بر ارزشهای خدمات رضاکارانه متمرکز شویم هفته های گذشته نیز شاهد افزایش فشار بر سیستم های مراقبت های صحی ما بوده است چرا که پذیرش شفاخانه ها و مخصوصا بخش های مراقبت های عاجل در نقاط مختلف کشور به ویژه به جمعیت های جوانتر در حال افزایش است من میدانم که بسیاری از ما همچنین شاهد تحولات در سایر نقاط جهان به ویژه در هند بوده ایم و من میدانم که افکار و دعاهای ما با کسان است که تحت تاثیر این بیماری همگیر قرار گرفتند و همچنان کسانی که از دست دادن عزیزانشان را چی در اینجا و یا در خارج از کشور تجربه نمودند من خودم به اندازه کافی خوششانس بودم که واکسین هایم را اینجا در کالیفرنیا دریافت کردم و واقعا امیدوار هستم که همه در کانادا از واکسین که برای سنین مختلف و ردبندی های مشخص است بهرمند شوند برنامه امشب ما به مناسبت تجلیل از روز زمین یعنی 22 ماه اپریل که روز توسعه حفاظت و ارتقای این سیاره زیبا که ما آن را خانه می نامیم می باشد. البته ماه اپریل ویژه و خاص است که در این ماه ما از شگفتن گلها و شگوفه ها در بیرون کلکین خانه هایمان زیبایی زمین را جشن می گیریم. و باران منبع تغذیه خاک است که حداقل در این ماه نیم از سیاره ما از خواب زمستانی بیدار می شوند. من بسیار حیجان زده هستم که میزبانی این قسمت برنامه را به عنوان مجری تلویزیونی تهیه کننده و ژورنالیست محیط زیست بر عهده دارم. این چیزی است که مرا حیجان زده می کند. و یکی از علاقمندی های خاص من گفتن داستان های است که چیگونه می توانیم رابطه خود را با محیط اطراف خود بهبود بخشیم. من میدانم که از رضاکاران عالی ما بیشتر از عمل کرده آنها بر ارزش برای آگاهی از محیط زیست جشن گرفته می شود. اما من فکر می کنم امشب ما با هم یاد خواهیم گرفت که چگونه نظارت و مراقبت از محیط زیست یک جنبه اساسی از ایمان ما است. ما برخی از اعضای شگفتانگیز جماعت را ملاقات خواهیم کرد که تلاش می کنند کره زمین را سبزتر کنند و در نهایت یاد بگیریم که مؤسسات ما چگونه کار می کنند تا اطمینان حاصل کنند که جماعت خانه ها و مؤسسات دیگر پایدارتر باشند و شما چگونه می توانید در این تلاش نقش داشته باشید ما امشب با باستاب های از الوائز حمید بابل شروع خواهیم کرد که زمینه را برای ما فراهم کرده و به ما یادآوری می کند که چیونه مسئولیت ما به عنوان نگهدارنده و مراقبت کننده زمین ریشه عمیق در سنت قرآنی و اصول ایمان ما دارد پس از آن ما از چند عضو جماعت بروی کارهای قابل توجهی که برای ساختن زمین جای بهتر از آن که به دنیا آمده اند می کشند می شنویم. و دنبال این موضوع گفتگو با خانم زکیه کاسم خواهیم داشت که او رئیس برای پایداری محیط زیست در کانسل ملی کانادا است و برخی از کارهایی که در حال حاضر در مؤسسات جماعتی برای بهبود پایداری در زندگی روزمره ما می باشد ممکن است در واقع شما را متعجب کند ما پس از آن به پایان برنامه خواهیم رسید که مثل همیشه با تماشای پارچه های موسیقی در مورد تجلیل از زیبایی زمین و طبیعت و رابطه ما با آن می باشد خواهیم شنید. خب حالا نظر به موضوع برنامه ما قرآن کریم انسانها را خلیفه خلقت خداوند توصیف می کند. ترجمه آیت اوست آن کس که شما را وارسان زمین قرار داد و برخی از شما را بر برخی دیگر درجه داد تا شما را بیازماید. و آنچه را به شما ارزانی داشت پایان یابد این برای ما چی معنای دارد دین ما چی هدایاته برای ارتباط ما با سیاره ما و خانه ما دارد تا به ما کمک کند تا زمینه استفاده مسئولانه را تنظیم کنیم پس بیایید به الوائز حمید بابل 
خوش آمدید بگوییم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم یعنی مدد ان رمضان مبارک رمضان is the holy month in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam received the first revelation of the holy Quran. In the Quran, Allah commands us, commands us to reflect on our self, our inner world, which is called alam sagir or microcosm, as well as the outer world, alam kabir or the macrocosm. There is a connection and correspondence between these two realms. They both reflect the sign or the ayats of Allah. The outer world impacts our inner world and vice versa. The outer world is governed by the various seasons. The changing of the seasons in the outer world symbolizes Allah's blessings through nature and reminds us that we must have an outlook of hope and optimism as well as seek rejuvenation in our material and spiritual lives. As our lives are enriched through the bounties and beauty in nature, today we take the opportunity during the auspicious month of Ramadan to reflect upon and examine our relationship with the nature and our responsibility towards it. We often hear that Allah has chosen human beings as his Khalifa. For example, Allah says in the Quran, we placed man upon the earth as wise gerund. Wise gerund or representative is someone who fulfills the function of someone else. That's what Khalifa means in the most profound sense. Since God is the creator, the protector and the preserver of his creation, human beings by being God's Khalifa must partake in those functions here on earth. Indeed, we the humans are mandated to be the guardians of God's creation. In several hadiths, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam guides us not to waste water, how to treat animals, not to cut trees, especially the food bearing trees, and much more. Dr. Sayyid Hussain Nasser, a renowned Shia scholar, delivered a lecture at the Smiley Center in Barnaby on 26th April 2014 in which he talked about the role religion plays in the environment, especially in relation to Islam. Let's listen to a part of his lecture. So the Islamic world intellectually has it much more easy and culturally much more easy because our culture, as I said, like poetry, prose, histories, and so forth and so on, are replete with a kind of cosmic dimension of Islam. And that goes back to the Qur'an. The Qur'an addresses not only human beings, but also the cosmos. There's a very, very strong sense in the Qur'an that Islam is not only for human beings. It's a cosmic reality. All creatures participate in Islam. And this is so strong and so powerful that if Muslims really come to themselves, it's much easier to be able to develop an environmental philosophy which would not be incongruent or with the religion or artificial, as if you uh, add an artificial tail to a donkey. Uh, it's part and parcel of the Islamic worldview. That's what for centuries many missionaries accused of Islam, Muslims of being naturalistic, of Islam being a naturalistic religion what appeared to the enemies of Islam at that time as being simply naturalistic, shows the integrative power of Islam in being able to integrate the natural and the human. They're not separated from each other. They're intertwined. The word that is used for this wonderful journal, Sacred Web, is really a Quranic term, deep down metaphysically. 
there's a web that connects us all to God. And that is not only human beings, all creatures. Kullu shayin yusabahu bihamdihi, the Quran says. It's not only us, kullu shayin, all things, him, the praise of God. And so there is this uh, community that we share with all creatures. Birds are called communities in the Quran. It's not only the community in Vancouver or Toronto of human beings. Bees, birds, everything has its own community. And there's the total community, which really is the total creation of God. And there's nothing outside of that. And it's so easy to develop an Islamic, an authentic Islamic philosophy of the environment. The environmental crisis itself, for those who really have eyes to see, have the perspicacity, is both the proof of God's transcendence and the proofs of the interconnected of all, connectedness of all beings. John Donne wrote, no man is an island. We human beings are not an island unto ourselves. We cannot be happy without the happiness of the rest of creation. We have killed enough, massacred enough of God's other creatures. Now is the time to pay. And as a kind of Yom al Qiyamah for all of us. And God will judge us in the future whether we are able to live in harmony and peace with the rest of his creation or commit suicide. There is no third choice. And it is great work that is before us. I hope and pray that the Muslims as a whole, and especially groups like the Ismaili community, which have had a long history of very, very profound treatments of this issue, going back to Nasr al-Husro and the great classical writers of 900 years ago, will step forward and provide a leadership and guidance, not only for the Muslims, but perhaps for the whole world. Yes. As Professor Nasser so powerfully and passionately mentioned, indeed, there is no third choice. And there is great work, in fact, a mission before us as Khalifa and also as an Ismaili community towards the understanding, the significance and sustainability of our environment. Today, there is much scientific evidence that proves a strong correlation, a strong correlation between nature and the various aspects of our lives, including our mental health. We generally experience that when the weather is gloomy and dark, we tend to feel sad or low. And when the sun is out and it's nice and warm, we feel good and happy. These examples show how the natural environment has a profound impact on how we feel emotionally since it impacts our mood and our behavior. Many communities, many communities are being affected by the environmental damage we are inflicting, including the amount of waste we produce, the lack of recycling, water waste, and the overconsumption of goods. Of course, these issues can and do vary from individual to individual and from community to community. Sometimes negligence on our part becomes a source of suffering for others, especially for people who are already marginalized. As the Khalifa, all humans must reflect upon these issues. We must continue to educate ourselves more and more about our physical environment. We must pay attention to how our consumption and our choices harm the environment and vulnerable people. So then the question becomes, which habit will we modify to reduce our environmental destruction? In Surah Al-Araf, Ayah 31, Allah cautions us, cautions us by saying, O children of Adam, take your adornment at every masjid and eat and drink, but be not excessive. 
Indeed, he likes not those who commit excess. Allah wants us to enjoy our lives on earth, but without being wasteful. In being Allah's Khalifa on earth, our Creator has made us responsible. Responsible for looking after all the bounties and resources that He has given us. He reminds us time and time again to treat the earth with care. As we live our daily lives, we must be conscious of how our daily actions and habits damage our physical environment. Let today be the day we recommit more to being true Khalifa, a true vicegerent, and promise to coexist with our physical environment with respect so that our generation and future generations benefit from the multitudes of nature's bounties. During the blessed month of Ramadan, let's collectively pray that we are blessed with wisdom, the determination, the will, and courage to fulfill our responsibility towards the environment. Yani Madad. با تشکر از شما الوائزه برای این بینش به این موضوع مهم من خودم کار تلویزیونه تلویزیونیم را با عنوان مجری تلویزیون نویسنده تهیه کننده و گزارشگر در کانادا آغاز کردم من برای ام تی وی شبکه دسکاوری در کانادا کار می کردم در نهایت به کالیفرنیا نقل مکان کردم تا برای ان بی سی نیوز در لس آنجلس کار کنم داستان هایی که من تحت پوشش قرار دادم و از آنان گزارش تهیه کردم شامل سودان جنوبی بعد از جنگ داخلی، هایتی بعد از زلزله غمانگیز سال 2010 تظاهرات اطراف جنگل بارانی گریت بیر در بریتش کولومبیا و همچنین آتش سوزی های کالفورنیا درست در باغچه خودم می باشند. من بدون شک می توانم بگویم که بحران های تغییر اقلیم و درک آنچه که ما با محیط زیست اتفاق می افتد برای همه ما ضروری است تا بتوانیم تصمیمات محاسبه شده را در زندگی خودمان بگیریم بلکه همچنین به طور که بتوانیم درخواست تغییر کنیم و بدانیم چه تغییر باید نه تنها از خود ما و رهبران ما شروع شود بلکه از سیستم ها و دولت هایی که ما نیز منشه می گیرد بنابراین ما نیاز به درک مسائل محیط زیست داریم به همین دلیل است که من فکر می کنم گزارشات راجع به محیط زیست بسیار مهم است اخیرا به دانشگاه برگشتم تا کارشناسی ارشد یا ماستری را در رشته ژورنالیست محیط زیست به اتمام برسانم و حالا شرکت تولیدی خودمان را با خواهرم که انجینیر بخش مناظر از دانشگاه هاروارد می باشند و همچنین یک مورخ فرهنگی است شروع کنیم ما با هم یک شرکت به نام لیلی میدیا اندیزاین را تشکیل داده ایم و هدف ما تهیه گزارش و گفتن داستانهای محیط زیستی است که امیدوارم تاریخ مناظر فرهنگی مان را از نو بسازیم. این نه تنها برای ما و سیاره ما بلکه برای نسل های آینده ما بسیار مهم است و من, و من بسیار حیجان زده هستم که این را بیشتر با همه شما در میان بگذارم. لطفا در صورت که می خواهید مرا در شبکه های اجتماعی از آدرس ات آلیا جاسمن دنبال کنید و اطلاعات و معلومات بیشتر در مورد سفرهای من با گزارش های محیط زیستی پیدا کنید و امیدوارم چیزهای یاد بگیرید من تنها کس نیستم که این کار را می کنم اجازه دهید از برخی دیگر از اعضای جماعت که برای حفظ و ارتقای محیط زیست تلاش می کنند بشنویم Yalimadad everyone, my name is Erzina Hamir. I'm an organic farmer on the east coast of Vancouver Island in the Comox Valley. Farming is maybe not a career that uh, many smileys consider, but uh, I've really enjoyed uh, living and working here for the last nine years. I studied crop science at the University of Guelph and I have my master's degree in agriculture as well. And um, quite frankly, I didn't consider farming um, even after graduation. My husband and I worked overseas with um, CUSO in Thailand and with the Aga Khan Rural Support Program in Gujarat for a number of years. And it was really only when we had our children back here in BC that we thought that this was something that would be important 
to raise our kids uh, with the understanding of where their food comes from and to have a slower pace of life. So uh, for the last nine years, we've run Amara Farm. We grow 47 different types of vegetables and about eight different types of fruit here. Um, and we grow food primarily for our community. We sell through the farmer's market and to some of our health food stores and we have a farm stand and this year we've launched a CSA where people can purchase food in advance and we give them a weekly box of vegetables. Uh, some of the challenges we've had, uh, I think probably the first one was just con uh, convincing my family that this was an occupation that um, made sense. I think it didn't in the beginning, but um, since they've come to visit and see the farm in action, I think they've come to understand how important it is to have local food and uh, to raise uh, our children, at least, in this environment. Um, farming is obviously a, a very tough profession. Uh, lots of challenges in terms of investing a lot of finances in setting up infrastructure and then having to work um, with Mother Nature. And so every year it's been different. Uh, I'm very glad that we grow so much diversity because every year we have at least one or two crop failures because of weather or insects or pests. So those are just the general challenges that most farmers have. Why was I inspired to do this? Um, I think this goes back actually to when I was quite young. Uh, I grew up in BC in, in Richmond and um, I remember um, Hazri Mom's visit in the, the late 70s where he told our Jamaat that um, service, how important service and volunteerism was. And I really took that to heart. For me, uh, farming and agriculture is, is about community building and community development. And um, that's the way that we run our farm. We try and create community around us and we support um, the rest of the, the community. I, I started a farmer's institute and now that I'm an elected official, I have the ability to also put resources towards our farming community. So service to our community through food is something that's really important to us. Um, we do farm organically, so there's no synthetic pesticides or fertilizers used on the farm. It's very important for us to feed our soils with uh, nutrients that are healthy for all of the life forms that inhabit this planet. And so I think that also really um, speaks to the ethos of Islam, where you know, we share this planet with all of God's creatures and have to nurture them as well as us. So um, that's just a little bit about Amara Farm and what we do, and thank you very much. Ya Alimadath, my name is Rehana Rajabali, and I'm a water resources engineer working in the realm of resilient urban development. In my current role with the Local Conservation Authority, I lead a team of engineering and technical professionals who work together to mitigate the impact of flooding and erosion and to ensure that the Greater Toronto Area, as it grows, does so in a way that conserves our natural resources and preserves the function of nature's infrastructure, the valleys, wetlands and ravines across our region. Practically, this means working on a wide range of programs, from policies or guidelines for managing stormwater, to green infrastructure projects, to flood warning and risk assessment programs. I feel so fortunate to be working in a role that's so deeply rooted in environmental planning and natural hazard management, because I feel it has a very tangible impact on the quality of people's lives. How have I responded to the call to be stewards of the earth? Well, this story goes back to when I was completing my engineering studies at Waterloo. And at the time, I very naively thought that I needed to go abroad to solve water resources issues somewhere else in order to serve humanity. But after I moved home and began working for the city of Calgary, I realized that there are plenty of challenges to solve no matter where we are. I was lucky. I had excellent mentors early in my career who showed me the true meaning of being a public servant. This idea of applying one's skills and knowledge towards the benefit of society and towards the benefit of our environment is actually part of the ethics of our faith. 
I think back to a conversation that I had 12 or 13 years ago at a gathering of friends where we actually sat down and looked at the AKDN ethical framework document. And I saw that our role as stewards is very explicitly articulated in that. And while I didn't realize it at that time, that conversation actually planted an important seed in my mind and it helped steer my career towards the public sector. But I think that this idea of applying one's skills and talents towards improving one's community cuts across all industries and still factors into what we do in our spare time. But it's not an all or nothing approach. I know that I am definitely not the best when it comes to sorting my compost from my black bin garbage. Um, but I do feel that I'm spending many hours of the day trying to work towards the betterment and the resilience of our city. I've also been lucky because even in the times when we've seen nature's true power unleashed, it's actually served to underscore the importance of this work. I remember when the 2013 floods happened in Calgary, I felt the value of having been part of a team that had helped equip the city with the tools to respond to that crisis. I remember spending the first night of the floods in our Jamathi Institution's Emergency Operations Center and then being called into the city's Technical Operations Center for the remainder of the week. I felt lucky that I could contribute something in that moment. And at the same time, I had been preparing to study further the relationship between our built environment, people, and nature. And that's what led me to Toronto for further studies. And after that, it was those experiences in Calgary that led me into my career focus area of flood risk management, which I continue with here in Toronto. One thing that's interesting about this line of work is that it moves both fast and slow at the same time. On one hand, I always feel that we're racing against time, that the next big storm could happen any time, and it could. So it's this constant push to try to get more data, more tools, more protocols in place before the next big one hits. So there's definitely no instant gratification in this field, but the change does happen. I see tools that we have worked on used in real flooding situations to help protect people and property. I look at maps of new development areas and see the patterns of land use built around preserving important ecological corridors. I see renewal projects that have taken 30 years of planning well before I came on the scene actually being constructed today. As for inspiration, I used to philosophically agree with the idea of leaving things better for the next generation, and of course I still do. But now that I'm a mother, it's also a very personal value too. Like every parent, I want my child to benefit from a better world. My parents instilled a love of camping and appreciating nature in me, and I want my son to be able to experience those same beautiful memories and hopefully pass them on to the next generation. میدانید چیزی که من در طول سفرم یاد گرفتم و آنچه هر یک از اعضای جماعت نشان می دهند این است که کار در پایداری و محیط زیست می تواند انواع مختلف را به خود بگیرد و به مهارت های مختلف نیاز دارد. اما هر آنچه که شما می آورید می توانید تاثیر گذاری کنید و حتی اگر تصمیم بگیرید که تاثیر گذاری حرفی نداشته باشید، که من فکر می کنم هنوز هم می توانید در خانه و در جامعه خود تاثیر بگذارید و درباره این که نهادهای جماعتی ما برای حفاظت و ارتقای محیط زیست چی کارهایی را انجام می دهند بیشتر بدانید ما اکنون از زکیه کاسم رئیس برای پایداری محیط زیست در کانسل ملی کانادا خواهیم شنید Yali Madat Zakia, thank you so much for being here with us. I'm looking forward to talking to you. For us, what has the messages been from Milana Hazar Imam and from the leadership in terms of the environmental impact on Jamat Khanna operations? See, Milana Hazar Imam has mobilized the AKDN Environment and Climate Committee. And one of the things that's happening is all institutions are reporting on their greenhouse gas emissions. So this is being done on a quarterly basis and we all did annual reporting as well. So there very much is a focus on having institutions be responsible about tracking their greenhouse gas emissions and looking for opportunities to reduce their climate impacts. Wow, that's incredible. I had no idea that this was being tracked. And when I think of you know, growing up in Jamaat Khanna and going to Nandi, I think of the plastic bags that you bring Nandi home in or the plastic wrap you put over, you know, the dukra or whatever. Um, what are, are there any initiatives um, in terms of improving 
sustainability within our Jamatkana practices. Yeah, absolutely, Alia. And the, you know, IVC has very much been a leader in this space. There have been teams that have implemented uh, plastic, ba- plastic bag bans across the Jamatkanas. And there is a move to push towards a, a complete ban on the usage of plastic bags. Now, this is something that not just the Jamaat institutions are doing, but the federal and provincial regulations are also moving towards a complete ban on single-use plastics. So we may indeed see some changes when we come back to Jamaat Kana post-pandemic. And uh, we're very excited to be introducing some of these changes right across the across the Jamaat Kanas. And the, the other thing that, uh, that the IBC has been actively doing is implementing recycling. So for on your Kashali programs, uh, for a number of Jamaat Kanas, you would have seen recycling um, opportunities to drop off your uh, your materials into recycling bins, either for green bins or for blue bins, depending on the type of materials being used. And it's very much an important part of making sure that we are being environmentally responsible while still, of course, enjoying these social activities. And, you know, I'm curious about, you mentioned earlier tracking the greenhouse gas emissions. Um, That's very fascinating. I'm curious if that we might see some of that tracking coming from transportation. You know, I think of my grandparents and they take transportation, both public and private, to get to and from Jamaat Kana. Are those the kind of things that we'll be tracking when it comes to the greenhouse gas emissions? The Council for Canada has done its greenhouse gas tracking in accordance with ISO 14064. So this is an international standard that's widely used around the world, and it has very detailed requirements about the way that we do our greenhouse gas tracking. So anything that is under the control of our operations, so our Ismaili Transportation Committee buses, the ITC buses, for example, we would be tracking our GHG emissions with that. We have also done some calculations to help the Jamaat understand what our emissions are. So for example, in 2019, pre-pandemic, our institutional greenhouse gas emissions were approximately 5,700 tons of CO2 equivalents. Out of that, the Jamaat, the transportation, when we did a calculation to estimate it, it works out to be about 8,500 tons of CO2 emissions. So there's certainly opportunities for the Jamaat to get involved at looking at its own carbon footprint. Hey, maybe we'll even have electronic vehicle charging stations in our Kane parking lot soon, right? Um, you know, you talk about how measuring can help, and I think It might be useful, if you don't mind, to simplify this for us. Can you, in the most simple terms, explain how measuring all of these, like measuring the greenhouse gases, how this data collection and the measuring will actually improve our sustainability? How does that work? So the way we do the measuring, and let me begin by saying that it's really important to have that baseline so that we know where our, um, where our interventions can be to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, number one. And number two is that we have a systematic way of monitoring how successful we are with our interventions. So in the case of the greenhouse gas inventory that we are now running as a, as a Jamaati institution, as the Council for Canada, We look at all of the Jamaat Kanas to begin with and all of the natural gas consumption that's used for heating purposes, all of the electricity consumption, and we do calculations based on the uh, carbon dioxide emissions associated with natural gas consumption and the power consumption. And this, of course, varies from province to province. So in Alberta, where we are still heavily dependent on natural gas and coal power, the emissions associated with electricity consumption are going to be much higher. But in jurisdictions like British Columbia or Ontario, where we have nuclear power or hydroelectric power that is driving the provincial economy, the emissions associated with electricity consumption are much lower. So by understanding the performance of our buildings, it helps us think through what kind of operating procedures can we implement to make our operations more energy efficient. And it's not just the consumption of natural gas or the consumption of of oil for our vehicles or for the fuel for the planes that uh, that we're looking at, but it's also important to look at your upstream emissions. So we don't have emissions associated with oil and gas processing, but because we're consuming these fossil fuels, there are upstream emissions that we're responsible for through our patterns of consumption. So even that gets tracked as well. Wow, that's incredible. 
You know, do you, when you think of our, of a lot of our Jamaat Khanas, um, you know, many of them were built, uh, you know, a long time ago, um, over a decade or sometimes two decades ago, if not more. And I'm curious if you have, if there have been any discussions about the idea of upgrading them um, for the environment, Th things like, you know, adding solar panels to the roofs of, of some of the Khanas or, or things like that. Is that, are those kind of things in discussion? Those kinds of things are very much in discussion. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say that we're going to put solar pa power panels on all of our Jamaatkanas, but the discussions are happening about how can we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And there's a couple things that I think are quite interesting. So one is the first thing to do is to look at our energy efficiency of our buildings. So when we did our ISO 14064 greenhouse gas inventory, we also benchmarked the energy consumption for electricity and natural gas consumption for all of our Jamaat Kanas. So it gave us a sense of all of the Jamaat Kanas across Canada and how efficient they were operating compared to each other. The second thing that's happening is we have been, you know, we're so blessed as a Jamaat to be able to have access to um, murids who are rendering TKN to the Imam. And as a result of that, we have a number of environmental professionals that are working on some of these initiatives. One who is looking at energy efficiency model modeling for one of our Jamaat Kanas that we know to be more uh, energy inefficient and to look for those opportunities on how do we make it more efficient. So we need to understand both sides of the, equation, of the equation. What can we do to reduce our energy consumption, number one, and then number two, what are the potential for alternative energy sources? Now, there's obviously a number of other factors that go into the decision making when before making uh, infrastructure changes to a Jamaat Kana, but certainly those discussions are happening. You know, something that really excites me, and I have to ask you about it, is when it comes to talking about, you know, greenhouse gas emissions or uh, changes with the environment, I think sometimes what we... Um, what we forget in all of it is why we're doing it, which is the idea of spending time in nature and honoring nature and enjoying our, you know, environment. And so when I think of Kanes, I also think of, you know, not just the built environment in terms of the architecture of a building, but also the landscape, the, often the beautiful Islamic gardens or, or uh, Islamic influenced landscape that surround our Kanes that can do things like, you know, the trees that can pro provide shade um, and help uh, and help in, uh, in, you know, the air quality. Um, are these things also being looked at the actual landscapes surrounding the Khanis? So one of the other initiatives, Alia, that we have on the go is we're looking at implementing an ISO 14001 uh, environmental management system. And the reason why I'm pointing out these ISO standards is we all heard during the um, Diamond Jubilee a very strong focus on best practices and the notion that we should be introducing best practices to all of our institutions. So as part of that implementation of an environmental management system, we're looking at all of our environmental impacts right now and looking at what policies and procedures can we put into place to mitigate the impacts that we're having on the environment and how do we actually set up a monitoring system with frequent auditing. So being able to introduce something like ISO 14001 to the Jamaati institutions would set up an internal mechanism by which it's always at the forefront of our decision making and our record keeping about what is the environmental impact that we are having. I love that. And, you know, my final question for you would be, what can all of our, uh, you know, individual uh, Jamaati members do at home? You know, so many of us bring things to Kane, we uh, socialize with each other. Are there things that you think we could be doing when we when we come to Kane um, or when we bring things to Kane that that would help the sustainability initiative? I think that's a great question, and it's not just about what are you doing that uh, with respect to your activities in the Jamaat Kana space, but it's about how do we lead our lives. So climate change is the biggest challenge that we face in the 21st century, and the key uh, things that we need to do as a society, the key um, behavioral changes that we need to make is to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels. So anything that we can do to uh, reduce our consumption of fossil fuels, so alternate transportation, looking at public transportation means instead of using personal vehicles, for example, looking at how we're using energy consumption within our own home environment and you know, our natural usage of natural gas, our usage of electricity. 
And then right across Canada, we have recycling programs and we have uh, organic waste composting facilities. It's really important that we use green bin programs. And when those green bins are set up at Jamati functions, those green bins absolutely need to be used. Because when food enters into the landfill, the production of methane is extremely detrimental to the environment and methane emissions are significantly more impactful than carbon dioxide emissions. So using the green bin program or the organic composting programs in the Jamatkana spaces, but in our home environments is also an important thing that, that we can all do. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to, to speak with us today. Uh, Zakia really was informative and, and very exciting that uh, the uh, Jamaati institutions are being so progressive in terms of ensuring a future of environmental sustainability within our Kanes. Thank you, Alia. از خانم زکیا که ما را در مورد این که چگونه نهادهای ما سهم خود را برای تاثیرگذاری بر محیط زیست انجام می دهند متشکرم. قبل از خداحافظی این سه شنبه شب شب قدر است که روز مورد علاقه من در سال است که یکی از مهمترین رویدادهای تاریخ اسلام را گرامی می دارد. زمانی که حضرت محمد صلی الله علیه و علیه و سلم اولین آیات را از سوی خداوند جل جلاله دریافت کردند. روز سه شنبه چهارم می که بیست و سوم ماه مبارک رمضان است از ساعت هشت شب الا دوازده شب به وقت کانادا از طریق وبسایت سایت آی و به برنامه مشترک ویژه جماعت امریکای شمالی که شامل دعا با استاب و ذکر خواهد بود با ما بپیوندید. ما عصر آن روز را برای توازن دین و دنیا با معنویت و تمرکز بر سفر باطنی به سوی تحقق و شادی شخصی خواهیم گذراند. حالا مثل همیشه برنامه را با پارچه موسیقی زیبا به پایان می رسانیم. بسیار تشکر از این که این هفته با ما پیوستید. روز زمین مبارک باد و این هفته باعث افتخار من بود که میزبان برنامه محیط زیست شما باشم. و امیدوارم آخر هفته فوق العاده داشته باشید در امان بمانید سالم بمانید ماسک بپوشید و در صورت امکان واکسین کنید عصر فوق العاده داشته باشید یا علی مدد ऐसा हो साल नो हर सुबह हो इस हसी जहान को नजर किसी से भी हो दिखी रो ना मुझे इन घटाओं में भी है महक सी बसी इन हवाओं में भी मिल रंग मुझ कभी पैगाम पंछी जो लाए सभी के उठो अब उठो नया आया है ये दिन गीत मौसम के सुनो नया आया है ये दिन दिखी रौन मुझे इन घटाओं में भी है महक सी बसीन हवाओं में भी कली फूल किल के बनी हवा धीमी धीमी चली खबर अबर की भी मिली दिखी मिट्टियों में नमी कली फूल किल के बनी हवा धीमी धीमी चली खबर अबर के नजारों ने 
Bye. Uh-huh. 